Hi guys and welcome to our next English class on Unit 3, Lesson 8. Today we are going to cover irregular verbs, okay? So, before we begin talking about irregular verbs, let's go ahead and do a small review of what we've covered so far. We've talked about uh, regular verbs and these are the verbs that when we form the past tense, we add ed at the end. We have some examples here. Uh, we have four examples in the base form, play, rope, stop, and carry. And we've changed each one of these uh, verbs into the past tense. Here are the rules that we used to form the past tense. And then we have past with helping verbs. And we have, we've already, I've already done this for you, okay? So there are two things that you have to remember. Number one, don't forget the rules for forming or when forming the past tense, okay? Uh, and I've already written down them down for you, excuse me, so that you can pretty much just look at them and hit the refresh button for them, okay? And number two, the helping verb must agree with the subject. If it's a singular subject, you can use has or had with the uh, verb in its past form. And then if it's a plural subject, we use, or you guys can use have or had, and then the verb in its base form, just like the example. Okay, so we can choose has, have, had, and notice that all the verbs are already in their past form. All you have to do is choose the correct helping verb, and this is based on the subject. Yes. Okay. So, we're starting now with irregular verbs. And do you know any of these? You probably have. And these are just a few uh, because there are too many, too many for me to write them down. So, these are the ones that we pretty much cover in the lesson. Okay. So when we talk about irregular verbs, we're talking about the verbs that do not end in ed. So when you form the past tense, you don't add ed to these, okay? So verbs that do not add ed to show the past action are called irregular verbs. And you must remember the spelling of irregular verbs. So in other words, for irregular verbs, we won't have rules like we did with regular verbs, with the ones that end with ed, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to write the 16 verbs that I added in this table. I want you to add them in the present or base form, in the past, in the past tense, and also past with helping verbs. And I want you to include the helping verb uh, has, have, had, okay? So you pause the video, you write them down, and then you hit play when you're ready. All right? Okay, so get to it. Now that you've copied the 16 verbs from the table, including the base form, and of course the present, you've also included the past tense and also the past with helping verbs, you're ready for some examples. Okay, so let's look at the first example. I eat now. First thing that you should notice is, right, the verb. And in this sentence, the verb is eat. Eat. Is it in the present? Is it in the past? Is it in the future? Is it past with helping verb? No, it's in the present. But if you said present, then you are getting this. Now, don't forget that when we are working with the present tense, you got to keep your eye on the subject. Yes, every time you work uh, with the present tense, you have to keep your eyes on the subject because the verb uh, is going to change or stay, the, stay in its base form depending on the subject, okay? Remember that if you have a singular subject, then the verb is going to change according to the rules. If your subject or if the subject is plural or you or I, like in this example, then uh, the verb is going to stay in its base form like 
the example that we're working with, okay? So remember again, rules for the present tense say singular subject, verb changes according to the rule, plural subject, I, you, verb stays in its base form. And if you need to copy this down, go ahead and do it. If you need to have the present tense rules next to you, go ahead and do it, that's fine. The more you read it, the more you practice, the better you become, and you will learn the rules by heart. Okay, let's look at the second example. I ate earlier. First thing to notice is the verb. You notice that the spelling is different, right? Did you notice that? Ate, and that's because ate is in its past tense. Yes. And when we are working with the past tense, uh, you need to memorize these verbs and you don't need to work or worry about the subject, okay? Let's go to the next example. I have eaten already. Hmm. You notice that the verb has a helping verb. So this is a past with helping verb. But because we're working with, uh, we are working with uh, irregular verbs. Yes, you notice that this is a past with the helping verb. But there are a few things that you have to remember. First, you have to remember that in past with helping verbs, the helping verb has, have, had, must agree with the subject. That means that if you have a singular subject, you can use either have or had. And if you have a plural subject, then you can only use have or had. Okay? And also, notice that the main verb in, it, in the verb phrase, have eaten, the spelling is different as well. Okay, so not only does it change in the past tense, but it also changes in the past with helping form. Okay, so you have to memorize this. You have to remember it because I will not be giving you rules so that you can memorize it. You just have to do it, okay? Awesome. So let's try it out. I have six of her that I uh, use from the book page 112. So those of you that have your book, you can go ahead and look it up. If you don't have your book, don't worry because I already uh, wrote it for you, so no problem. Okay, so let's look at this. We have six verbs and then it says present, and then we have past, and past with helping verb, they're empty. We have to work on that. So because you have the table that I told you to copy before we started, or when I told you to pause, right? Remember that? You should be looking at that table that you have to answer this, okay? Now I want you to notice two things. In the past tense, the past tense, you only have, uh, you only have a verb, a word. Past tense does not need helping verbs. Past tense is like Superman. He doesn't have any uh, anybody helping him, okay? Past with helping verbs, it's more like Batman and Robin, where Batman needs uh, Robin to help him out uh, in things because he can't do on his own, okay? So I want you to keep that vision in your head. If you have a helping verb, you need to use past with helping verb. That's the section of the table that you need to keep your eyes on. If you don't have a helping verb and you're forming the past tense, then you need to keep your eyes on the side of the table that is covering or that it has the past tense. Okay? So, let's get to it. So, number one, we have sing. I am going to give you a few minutes. I want you to work on this on your own. I want you to pause it. I want you to work on this have them in, or you can just, you know, discuss them uh, with your parents, or you can write them down somewhere, anywhere on sticky notes, just for you to practice and get used to using the table, because I'm not expecting you to memorize this table, like, in 30, in 30 seconds. No, I am expecting you to memorize them, because you do need to know them by heart, but that's not going to happen now, because you're now learning this, okay? So, I want you to pause the video. I want you to uh, get the answers for the past 
and the path with helping verbs and then come back to the video once you've answered them, okay? Awesome, let's get to it. Now that you've already, you've already um, answered the, uh, the try it out section, you've already answered it in a weekly paper or in your English notebook on this or on a sticky note, just anywhere, keep it handy, okay? Uh, we're gonna go over and you're gonna double check whether you answered correctly or not. Are you ready? Okay, if you need to grab your things, go ahead, pause the video, and then come back and hit play. All right, so for number one, I need you to check this. Sing in the present, sang in the past, and if there is a helping verb past have had, we use sung, okay? Check your paper. If you made any mistakes, go ahead and fix it. Let's go to number two. Begin. If you answered began, then you answered correctly. And for the past with helping verb, if you answered begun, then you're correct as well. Don't forget, if you made a mistake, it's okay, just fix it. As long as you correct it, we're good to go, okay? Let's go to number three. Number three, come, came, have, have, had, come. Now notice that with come, it does change in the past tense, but when it's accompanied or when it has the helping verb, it goes back to its base form. So it's has, have, had, come. Good. Number four, no, new, has, have, had, no. Now see the difference in spelling, not only in the past tense, but also in the past with helping verb. Okay. Number five, Eat, ate, has, have, had, eaten, okay? Correct your paper. If you're doing okay, that's awesome. Thumbs up to you. Number six, tell, told, has, have, had, told. Now notice that for number six, uh, the past tense and the past with helping verbs are exactly the same. So this is why there are no rules when working with irregular verbs because they, they, they vary, they change. Okay, so double check your paper, make any corrections, pause it while you're correcting, and once you're ready, let's continue practice, okay? Now we are on page 113 on your own. And for this section, you had to write each sentence using the correct form of the verb to show past action. Now this is tricky because we know that there are two ways. There's the past tense and there's the past with helping verb. So we have to keep an eye on that. Have your table or your chart next to you so that you uh, can work on this. I want you to pause this and I want you to try to answer seven through 13. You can just do answers only. You don't have to write the sentences out, okay? I already did them for you. So you can just try to figure out the correct form of the verb to show the past, the past action, excuse me. So just press pause, try to work on it, and I'll be right back with you, okay? Perfect. Okay, now that you've answered seven through 13, we're gonna go over the answers and we're gonna see if you guys are understanding how to work with this, okay? Let's see if you correctly formed uh, the past action for these verbs. Now, I told you before that there are two things that you have to look for, right? The past tense, it's on its own, it does not need any help from anybody, so has, have, had. If they're not, you're not going to use the helping verb when you're using the past tense. Now, the past with helping verb does need have, have, or had. So let's see how you did. For number seven, first thing that you notice is that we have the helping verb had. Did you notice that? So when you see 
the helping verb in the sentence, you know that you need to keep your eye and look at the side of the chart where it has past with helping verb, okay? So you use your chart, you find take, and then you move your finger to that section where it says past with helping verb, okay? And you should have answered, Oh, let's go back to the example. I'm sorry. Okay, so in the example, his uncle had blank Matthew failing lessons, and we have the base form gift. We acknowledge, and again, same thing, we acknowledge and we see that there's a helping verb there. So when you have a helping verb, you're going to look at the chart, and you're going to look at the side of the chart that is giving you the answers for past with helping verb, and you find give. If you look for give, point your finger to where it shows the past with the helping verb and given is the answer. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's go now, let's do number seven, yes. Okay, so for number seven, again, we do see that it has uh, the helping verb had, we see it right here, there it is. So then we see the base form take, so we use our charge, we find take, and then we point with our finger to what it says, on the past with helping verb section, and it says taken, yes. And if you wrote taken, awesome, okay? The reason why there's a helping verb, right? And when we have past with helping verbs, we use the section with the past with the helping verb. Also, the past tense of take is took, but took is doesn't need the help of a helping verb. Took can stand on its own. So no helping verb with the past tense. Okay, let's go to number eight. Matthew blank his friend Tyler to join them one day. And the verb that we have is tell. Do you see a helping verb in this sentence? No, which means that we should be looking at the side of the chart where it says past. So you find the word tell and then you go to the section, to the column, where it says past tense. And your answer should be told. Good job. Okay, let's go to number nine. Number nine, Tyler's father blank him to the boat. And our uh, verb, uh, verb is drive. Do you see a helping verb? Do you see the word has, have, or had in this sentence? No which means that you're gonna use the past tense in a simple form with the no helping verb. So we go to drive, find the word drive, and then we look at the past tense column, and it should read drove. Yes, so Tyler's father drove him to the boat. Number 10, Tyler blank goodbye to his father. Do you see a helping verb? No? Right answer, which means that you're going to go to the word say, and then you're going to look at the past tense, and your answer is said. You guys are doing such a great job. I love it. Okay, number 11, you're going to do the same thing. Matthew's uncle blank how to handle the boat, and your verb is no. What, what is the first thing that you're going to look for? Yes, if you said helping verb, then you're right. It, do we have any helping verbs here? No, no, we don't. You guys are doing this super, super, super good. Okay, so that means that we need the past tense, and the past tense of no is new. Matthew's uncle knew how to handle the boat. Let's go to number 12. The boat had blank to a pleasant island, and then we have our verb come. What did you notice? Yes, there is a helping verb. We have a helping verb hat. So in that case, we have to look for the word come and then go to the side of the column with past with helping verb. Did you find the answer? I'll give you an extra second. You got it. Had come. So the boat had come to a pleasant island. Perfect. Number 13, everyone blank a big lunch on the island and we have eat. You're right, no helping verbs in this sentence, which means that we're going to focus on the past tense. So what is the past tense of eat? The past tense of eat is ate. You guys are doing such a great job. Awesome. 
Okay, so now correct your paper. If you made any mistakes, don't forget to fix it. It's okay. Um, and once you correct the paper, you can go ahead and if you paused it, you can hit play again so that you can watch the, the rest of the presentation. Okay, so now that you've corrected on your own, you are going to practice what you've learned. You are going to work on extra practice page 132. For those, got, uh, for those of you that already have your book, you can use your book. For those of you that do not, I am going to up, upload it, the book page to the materials section so that you can see the page without any problem, okay? Now, I want you to read directions on the page carefully and do what it says. Okay, if it says to write the sentences, that's what you're going to do. If it just says to uh, write the, the answer, then just the answer. Please read the directions carefully. This assignment must be done in English notebook or Lucy paper. And remember to take a picture and send it to me. Okay, so I hope that this helps. I'll, uh, speak to you. Don't forget that we'll meet tomorrow and we're going to get some more practice with this. Okay. See you later.